Hello everyone. In today's video, we're going to be making a brine shrimp biosphere. Mostly because I think it sounds like a lot of fun. Now this is probably going to be a multi-part series just because this is going to take a little while for everything to, you know, like equalize and kind of establish itself. But in this video, we're going to focus on the initial setup and preparation of getting this biosphere established. So without further ado, let's just get right into it, shall we? Okay, we're just going to switch to me holding the my phone, and that way I can, you know, kind of go back and forth a lot easier and pan instead of having to readjust the da you know. But anyway, I have this really, really nice little glass container here that I got at Hobby Lobby, and I have it filled with two liters of distilled water. The distilled water part is very important. You do not want to use tap water for this because tap water usually contains chlorine. And chlorine, while it does help us stay healthy by killing off any bad bacteria or something in our drinking water, in this case, it would kill off a lot of the microorganisms that we want to they, we want them to establish themselves in this biosphere we're setting up. So you want to use nice, clean, pure, distilled water, and then we'll add in the necessary nutrients and the necessary components in order to make a, a brine shrimp saltwater solution. Now, if we're making a saltwater solution, the biggest thing we need is salt. Now, ideally, we would use uh, either aquarium salt. That'd be perfect. Uh, we could use uh, sea salt, like organic sea salt, or we can kind of make our own sea salt solution out of uh, table salt and a few other things I'll show you here in a second. Since we're going this route, if you're going to do this as well, make sure that your salt does not contain iodine. You do not want iodized salt for this because the iodine present in the salt may act pretty uh, very much in the same way that the chlorine would act in tap water, which might kill off a lot of our good bacteria that we want. And if we look in the ingredients, it just says salt, yellow pressure of soda. It doesn't say uh, potassium iodide or sodium iodide or anything like that. So this is this is fine to use. If it has any like dextrose or anything like that in it, that's not gonna hurt this, this at all. Just wanna make sure there's no iodine in here. You want your salt water solution to be about three and a half percent salt, which means for our two liters of distilled water here, we need seven grams of our non-iodized table salt. Now, brine shrimp are actually uh, very robust as far as the salt concentrations that they can live in. I think brine shrimp can survive up to 33% salt water environments. So it doesn't have to be like exactly three and a half percent as long as it's three percent or a little over you should be pretty good to go so just make sure that you do approximately three and a half grams per liter of distilled water in this uh, setup and you should be good okay another thing that we want is magnesium magnesium is actually a fairly important mineral for algae and just aquatic life in general so for our source of magnesium here we're going to be using epsom salt if you're going to be using epsom salts make sure that you get epsom salt that doesn't have any like paraffins or any perfumes or anything in it just Pure Epsom salt crystals are what you want for this reaction. Luckily enough, usually the cheaper, the better in this case, because it's just cheaper to manufacture, you know, plain Epsom salt crystals like this and package them up without having to process them with any colorings or fragrances or anything like that. So this is actually a case where cheaper is usually better. I actually got this at my surplus uh, local Amish store. And it came in, this Epsom salt came in these really, really, really nice big crystals. Like, look at that. Now, this might look like a lot of Epsom salt, which is 26 grams of magnesium sulfate. But the reason why we're going to be using 26 grams is because Epsom salt is actually magnesium sulfate heptahydrate, which means that for every one molecule of magnesium sulfate, there are seven molecules of water associated with that magnesium sulfate molecule. So in order to get the levels that we want for our solution, we have to really up the amount of Epsom salt we're putting in here. If we had anhydrous magnesium sulfate, 
you could just go with 1.3 grams per liter. But since we are using Epsom salt, Epsom salt is approximately 10% magnesium by weight. So in order to get the amount of magnesium we want, we have to add in 26 grams for this two liter solution. And that should take us up to the magnesium levels we want. Now that we have the magnesium and the salt, well, the sodium chloride added into our solution, we're gonna add a little bit of calcium chloride. These are just calcium chloride flakes that you can get for moisture absorbance. I think it's called damp rid or something like that. These, This is actually a really good source for calcium chloride and it's really, really readily available and really, really cheap. I think you can get like five pounds of it for like under $10 usually. Uh, but we want some calcium in this solution because the calcium is very important for our brine shrimp because brine shrimp are mini crustaceans and little uh, crustaceans such as those, they have those little hard exoskeletons and they use calcium for their exoskeletons. So this is going to be one small source of calcium. We'll add some more stuff here in a little bit and I'll show you that. But this is going to be just a little boost for a... Uh, a little calcium boost for them in case it's not as readily available in the short term as they need it. So we're going to add some calcium chloride in here. Calcium chloride is also incredibly soluble in water and calcium chloride is also incredibly hygroscopic. In this little container here, I have Two, well, 0 0.2 grams of potassium nitrate, 0 0.1 grams of potassium chloride, one gram of sodium carbonate. And the reason why we're adding these in is because the potassium nitrate is going to be basically a trace amount of starter nitrates for our algae culture that we'll be adding in to give them a little extra boost while they're establishing themselves in this little biosphere. The sodium carbonate, you could use sodium bicarbonate, you know, baking soda for this as well, but sodium carbonate I like better because it dissolves way easier in the water solution than sodium bicarbonate would. And the reason why we're using the sodium carbonate is that sodium carbonate will give the brine shrimp a very easily available source of carbonate ions for them to mineralize their exoskeletons and help them develop a little faster and a little healthier and, and easier. So we're going to put all this in here. As far as chemicals go, that should be about it. Now, since we've added all that in, there is one thing that we have to do before we go any further. We have to make sure that the pH of this solution is 8 or higher. We don't want this to be an acidic solution. We want it to be as close to eight as possible. Maybe maybe eight and a half, something like that is fine. But we don't want this to be acidic. So let's see. Put a little bit of indicator paper in here. And let's see. And I'll tell you what, that that's pretty much perfect. That's right at the pH we want. That's right about eight. Maybe somewhere between eight and nine, eight and a half, but I, I don't think it's quite nine. So yeah, that's, that's perfect. That's what we want, a pH of eight. Excellent. Now, in this video, all we have to do is add algae culture that I actually have sitting in these little containers here. I also got these little guys at Hobby Lobby. I wanted to see if I could grow algae in salt water, actually. And the algae that I have in these guys, these, these have been completely sealed up for the better part of a year now. And this is a saltwater solution in these bottles. And the algae that I have in these bottles was obtained from a freshwater source. A lot of freshwater algae will grow fairly well in salt water as long as the concentration isn't too high. This is actually a really, really good source of salt water algae that we're going to be adding in here. Yeah, the algae is going to be doing a few things. For one, it's going to be the brine shrimp's primary food source. 
the algae is also going to absorb and convert any harmful, well potentially harmful nitrates that the brine shrimp and bacteria and all those little microorganisms that are going to be present in here. It's going to absorb that and convert it into, well, more algae and less harmful uh, components that will be part of the biosphere system. And apart from the algae being the brine shrimp's main food source, it's also going to be their oxygen source. Because, well, just like, like terrestrial plants like trees and grass and all that stuff, algae converts carbon dioxide and various minerals and nutrients using sunlight into more algae and its biggest byproduct especially the one that we're interested in here is oxygen and the brine shrimp just like any other crustacean or fish or whatever need oxygen to survive so this is going to provide them with the food source it's going to clean up the waste that the brine shrimp and the bacteria present in here are going to produce and it's going to provide an oxygen source. I guess uh, it should be said that it's going to remove the excess carbon dioxide that's going to be present in this biosphere. I'm just trying to free up as much of this algae that's kind of grown on the side of this container as possible so that I can get as much of it in the container, into the big container as possible. Okay, I have a lot of that freed up. So I'm going to pour this into here. And that's what we want. We want it to turn a nice green color. The more algae at this point, the better. And while we're at it, I'm going to also do the same for this container. I'm going to clean off the algae here and dump the algae from this container into the big one as well. So let me do that. So now we have a really, really nice setup here that's full of just billions and billions of tiny little algaes. The next thing and pretty much the last thing we have to do in order to get this ready for this video is add some brine shrimp eggs. And I actually have those right here in this little vial. I got this on Amazon. Just uh, I've had these for a long time. The cool thing about brine shrimp eggs is they actually encase their eggs in these little cysts that are very, very robust. These are completely dried out and desiccated, and they can remain dried out without any water for years and years and years. But once they uh, are put into water or once they make their way to a water source, they'll rehydrate, they'll hatch, and you'll have little baby brine shrimp. So we're going to add just kind of an arbitrary amount into this right here because there's not really any way of knowing how many of the brine shrimp that we're going to put in here are going to survive. This is going to kind of have to adjust itself and kind of reach an equilibrium where the brine shrimp aren't overpopulated and, you know, it'll stabilize itself with all of the the variables that are going to be going on in here. Everything should, in theory equal out after this is well established now you don't have to uh, go and buy brine shrimp eggs off of amazon for if you want to do something like this they actually sell brine shrimp eggs in pet stores for fish food and look at the brine shrimp eggs floating there in the middle because they're still very very dried out they haven't rehydrated yet that's okay you don't even need to buy a big vial like this. You can easily get brine shrimp eggs at Walmart in the form of sea monkey kits. Just get a sea monkey kit and you can do everything that we're doing here. Add the sea monkey eggs into your biosphere in the step that we're doing right now. And that's all it is because that's all sea monkeys are, are little brine shrimp. So now that we have everything added in here as far as the chemicals and the algae and the brine shrimp in the solution there's two more things we need to do right now while this is becoming established the first thing we need to do is we need to make sure that there's enough oxygen in here for the brine shrimp once they do hatch which they should hatch in about 24 hours thereabouts they hatch pretty quickly once they rehydrate 
but we want to make sure that there's a good oxygen source in here while the algae is establishing itself. So we're going to actually bubble air in through here into this for a little while. I'll set that up and I'll show you here after I get it done. And the other thing we want to do is we want to keep this a consistent temperature. Now, if you're doing this like in your house where it's pretty much consistent all day long, all year long and stuff like that, as far as temperatures go, you should be fine just to keep it at a room temperature. But seeing as how we're out here in the shed, it's cold right now, it's winter time. So we're going to add a small aquarium heater into the container here. And we're gonna let this keep things warm while everything kind of establishes itself. So let me set the heater up. Let me put an air bubbler in here and then we'll just kind of go from there, okay? I'll be back in a minute. And there we go. I have the aquarium heater suction cup to the side of the container. I have the aquarium air pump. There it is, bubbling away on the bottom there. And I turned my stir bar all the way down to the lowest setting because I don't want this to spin really, really fast. I just want this to spin fast enough to keep things sort of agitated so that things don't uh, all settle to the bottom and just like kind of stay there and stagnant. Uh, the foil on top is just so that a whole bunch of water doesn't like splash out and like splash all over my workbench here. But yeah, that should be... A nice little setup so we're going to let this sit for a few days and then come back and see how things are going these lights that I have on out here should be plenty of light for our algae buddies to thrive in and do their thing so now we just have to kind of hurry up and wait and let it do its thing so I'll see you guys here on the next video thank you very much for watching I'll catch you next time bye guys